Welcome to the conversation. Uh, we are pleased today to continue talking about the election of 2020, but there is an imminent actual election that's going to send someone to Congress uh, before everybody else goes to Congress at the beginning of 2021. And that is in the 27th District of New York, where Nate McMurray is running for the open seat vacated by the uh, by the criminal Chris Collins. Nate, thanks for coming on the conversation today. Thanks for having me on. I'm grateful to be here, Michael. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the setup first. Explain to us, I know, but I think it would be better to hear it from you, exactly what people are voting on on the 23rd, because we know it's the New York primary. But what is it more than that for you? Well, it's a special election. So in 2018, I ran against a guy called Chris Collins, the first to support Trump. Um, and we almost beat him. We lost by 0.37 percent. Is that one of the closest races in the country? Um, but he went to Congress. He said he was going to serve. He did not serve. He ended up resigning and he pled guilty to a crime. So because of that, there's an empty seat. Now, I've been running for the seat for two and a half years because of the first race. And then we are hoping that the special election to fill the seat would happen faster. But it was originally scheduled for April 28th. Then COVID occurred. We asked for it to be delayed, even though I strongly believe we would have won that day because there was a very active presidential primary on that day. It was pushed back until June 23rd. So in about 13 days or 13 days, there's going to be an election to fill that seat. Um, and if I win, it'll be a major impact not only for this region, but for the entire country, because this is a place where Trump won big before. So we're hopeful that we'll have a great showing in 13 days. So, you know, one of the, the first thing you hear is, oh, my God, the, this is one of the first people. Actually, I think the first person on Capitol Hill, as you said, to to endorse Donald Trump. Ironically, the second may have been Duncan Hunter from California, also uh, not in Congress anymore, also a criminal. Um, but there is something to being the first uh, the first to endorse Donald Trump, which means it must play in Peoria, as they say. How does this play in your district, right? I mean, th there had to have been some political impetus for doing that. Trump's popular here, and that's sad because the policies of President Trump haven't helped anybody here. But this is a region that has been devastated by bad trade deals, by uh, simple change in demographics that have driven people out of the region. Um, and a lot of people are desperate. And they looked at Donald Trump as someone that would save us, as a desperation Hail Mary past that would you know, win it for us. And he hasn't delivered any of the promises. He said he would give health care to every single American. He did not. He said he would bring back manufacturing. There is no more manufacturing in NY27. In fact, NY27 has the worst job market in the country, the worst. So a lot of people place their hope in Donald Trump, and they st I still think many of them hope he'll, he'll somehow pull some miracle to change things. But um, the reality is this is a, a place where a lot of people needed help, and they thought they were betrayed by both parties. And an outsider like Donald Trump would be someone that would help them. What does Nate McMurray say to a Trump voter, uh, someone who you see at an event who says, you know what, Nate, I voted for Donald Trump. Uh, I'm, I voted for Chris Collins. I, I didn't like Hillary Clinton, and I don't like the Democrats. I don't like Nancy Pelosi. Convince me to vote for you this time because one's in jail and the other one hasn't done a good job. I tell him, you may not agree with everything I say, but you know who I am and you know I'll be truthful to you and I'll listen. And I hope that my sincerity pulls them over. And the last year we had the biggest partisan swing for a first time candidate, state or federal in the country in a place where Donald Trump won by 24 points. And we had no support from the outside, no national money coming in. We did it by selling t-shirts and work hard here on the ground. Um, and we did it alone. So I, tell, so I hope that that positive energy carries over into 2020. Um, but I tell them, look, at, I know why you believed in Donald Trump. I get it. I get he's a great salesman. The pitch worked. But eventually, you got to get the product. And there hasn't been a product. There hasn't been any results. We don't have health care. There isn't lower drug prices. Now, remember, I live right here. I live on an island between, Can between the United States and Canada. It's a, it's a big, huge island the size of Manhattan, covered with trees. And I think about it every day. If you look across that island, I can look two miles away, and I can look at a place where everybody has health care. 
and people in my region go there to buy drugs. And I say, look, at, if they're doing it there, why can't we do it here? And I tell them Donald Trump made promises he hasn't fulfilled. If they'll send a guy like me to Congress, I will try to fulfill those promises. Yeah, and that's a, that's a really good argument and, and good political persuasion, which it sounds like you did a lot of in, 20, uh, in 2018, and you're going to try and do a bit more of now. Um, talk to me about how what's going on in the, in, in the country as a whole right now. The, the pandemic, sure. Uh, you have a governor whose approval has gone uh, sky high at times, uh, even from people who are not given to loving him, whether it be Republicans or Democrats who have problems with him on other scores. Uh, but now he might be somebody politically who is an advantage to Democrats running in that state. And then, of course, you had what happened in Minneapolis that, that spread to Buffalo, as we saw, and and got the president's attention. Uh, and Buffalo, you know, uh, nearby your district. Um, tell me a little bit about how both of those are playing and everything that we just talked about. Well, I'll be honest, COVID has been very difficult for us from the, the fact that their election date changed to the fact that we have not been able to have our rallies. I mean, one of the things that drove us hard in 2018 was the numbers of people we came to live events. Um, we had hundreds of people in rural New York for a Democrat um, waving flags and being excited. I mean, I was really into retail politics. I did, we did parade after parade after parade. I did a lot of things that traditional politicians nowadays tell you don't work. Well, we did all that stuff, and it worked, and I'm proud of it. And unfortunately, because of COVID, that's been very difficult. We had to close all of our offices. We gave a lot of our computers away to kids who needed, who needed help, uh, needed to have something to use to, to – to stay in school. Um, but what we're going to do regarding the, the, the issues regarding Black Lives Matter is it's been, it's been amazing in some regards and disappointing in others. I think our region is terribly embarrassed right now by what happened in Buffalo. I have, I have openly called out our elected officials and say this is wrong. We clearly have a problem when, when hundreds, dozens and dozens of police officers gather and applaud somebody who knocked down a 75-year-old man. Um, it's shocking. And the fact that the man I'm running against, I had a debate last night and I was fierce with him because he wouldn't deny or he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would, he basically agreed live with the, the tweet that Trump sent out saying the man was a, uh, a protest actor or, um, a crisis actor. And it was a, some kind of fake, you know, staged, uh, a staged attack. Um, he, he agreed with that conspiracy theory live. And I think it's tragic when we have elected leaders in Washington and then people who want to go to Washington who can't just take the easy layup and say that that tweet was wrong. However, I agree with X, Y, and Z. They're not even willing to challenge something that is so patently or obviously wrong as that conspiracy-laden tweet that Trump set out. But let me give your, your listeners and the people watching some hope. Again, we live in a place where Trump won by 24 points. Because we can't do the large rallies, we've been doing these road rallies where we line up cars, we drive across the district. On Saturday, I saw young people in these small towns across NY27, places like Hamburg and Orchard Park and Mount Morris, gathered by the hundreds, protesting peacefully, kneeling and, and praying and, and carrying Black Lives Matter signs. Young people, young kids. And I saw these kids in Wales holding big homemade signs. They must have saw our route and knew where we were going to be that said, Nate McMurray for Congress, Black Lives Matter. And I was humbled that someone who has lived with a certain degree of privilege um, was associated with such a noble cause. But also, uh, it gave me hope that these young people will make our country a better place. And that Western New York, a place where we see open and hostile racism recently, will be a place where my children and the families of Western New York can all feel safe and secure. And that's something I'm going to fight for. And you're also going to fight for Medicare for all. Is, uh, is, that, is that right? Is that something you're, that's on your agenda? Yes. And it drives me crazy when uh, moderate Democrats won't even say it. I mean, I'm in a district where it kills me, to, where supposedly it's supposed to kill me to say it. And I lost by only 0.37%. Now, look, I tell people, you can call it whatever you want, but the principle is, Every single American needs to have health care and that every other developed country has figured it out, whether through a single payer system like we have in Canada 
or whether through a completely socialized system like the UK, I say all the time, not only, not, America is not the rule, it's the exception. Nobody else, Germany, Japan, they've all figured out some way to cover everybody. Now, I believe Medicare for all is the best solution. That's what I've advocated for. I think what you feel here where people have so little is they're afraid that they're going to lose their Medicare if we expand it. But I tell them that's absolutely not the case. We're going to make sure we cover every single American. And if we can cover a $2 trillion tax cut or a $3 trillion tax cut or in the CARES Act, a $500 billion slush fund with com for companies that already have tons of cash, we can certainly figure out a way to pay for health care like every other developed country. So, yes, I absolutely believe, believe that Medicare for All is the right solution. And I also believe if Democrats across the country said it in unison, it would already have been done. I think there's too much playing to corporate interest. There's too much cowardice on this issue. And I, I'll fight for it when I go to Washington. It's a Donald Trump plus 24 district. Nate McMurray is trying to win it after coming within a point of winning it in 2018. It would be to serve out the rest of this term, be on the ballot in November so that he could serve a full two year term beginning in 2021, January of 2021. Nate McMurray, thank you for being on the Young Turks. Good luck to you out there in uh, in Buffalo or inside in Buffalo, as you have to be uh, as you're running in the times of COVID. And uh, we look forward to talking to you after the race. Oh, this is a great pleasure to be on the show, and I appreciate everything you guys stand for. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.